God did something so wonderful today for me. He encouraged me in the most unlikely way. And I'm going to tell you how. Chanel Marche. Chanel Marche really encouraged me. How? Romans 3 and 4. But let God be true, and every man be a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. The Lord encouraged me through Chanel in the most unlikely way. I realized that in the midst of everything that we have going on, right? God is always using us, guys. He's using us no matter what comes to hinder you and what comes to hinder the will of God for your life. God's word will always prevail and the truth always prevails. And the, the truth is eternal, God's truth. And anytime God speaks, it's never to glorify men. It's not to glorify us. It's always to glorify him. The Lord is coming. He's coming. And so I'll tell you, I um, I was discouraged today. And as I was going to come on to start taking down videos, I saw a comment. And it encouraged me. It was something I already saw. What was it? I guess Chanel did a video, but she didn't put what it was about. And someone that watched it came and placed a comment. And she said that I'm in trouble. And I was just thinking, girl, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, I was thinking that. You know, in this life, guys, we always go through something. You always do. When you say yes to God, you have to understand that you are on the side of truth. You're on the side of the light. You're also, we're in a battle between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And the depending on what side you want, there's already a winner. And so you have to pick the right side. How you know what side you're on is by the truth. It's not what, what I say. It's not what another person says. It's is what is being said. Does it come from God? Does it align with scripture? Does it glorify God? You see, the trouble is not in this existence that comes, that comes to try you, that comes to test you, that comes to seduce you out of the will of God, that 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 comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's that that's 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 not it. That's not the trouble. The trouble is at the end of this that you don't reap the reward, the inheritance that the Lord promised you. That's the trouble. That's the side that none of us want to be on or find out that we're on after the fact. I don't want to find out at the end of this that I labored in vain, but everything I went through was in vain. So I came on here because I realized something. God's never lied to me. And it's nothing I never, I never did anything but just believed him. And his word has been true. And if anything has been delayed or tarried, it's because he's merciful and he's working all things out for our good, for the good of those that love him. And we know that, Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. You know him. He loved you. To love him is to obey his commandments. Do you love him? Do you know who you're fighting for? And don't let people that are deceived, that don't know, 
cause you to give up or forfeit. Remember, she doesn't know, but I do, and so do you. If you know the word, then you know him. And if you know him, then there's nothing you need to doubt or fear. You know his plans. You may not know the details, but you know his plans. You don't know the process, but you know the expected end. So stand and give people the truth. Show them the light. Show them what you're fighting for. Show them what you believe in. Show them the difference. Show them that you're willing to fight no matter what. And show them who our God is and who the commander of our army is. Because if he's on your side, there's evidence. Or really, if you're on his side, there's evidence. That's the one thing I know about God. And so God reminded me of the evidence of simply being obedient. The word always comes to pass. And then it brought me to a place that I realized that I need to do more. There's power in prayer. There's power in a lot of things. The enemy's goal is to stop and to hinder us, but he can't stop us. He can just make us believe that he is. Let's not stop in doing God's will. Let's keep fighting. And how do we fight? To stand. Stand. Stand in your faith. Stand in the word. Believe God. That's how you fight. You don't have to throw fiery darts. That's what the enemy does. The Lord shields. He told you to put on the full armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of Satan, right? Girding your waist in truth, clothing or shodding your feet in peace, holding the sword of the spirit, which is the word, right? Holding the shield of faith and having on the helmet of salvation. I haven't said that in a while. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I'm going to read it from the NKJV. In his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may, this is uh, 6 starting from 10, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness of this age. So people aren't our enemies. We're not fighting a flesh and blood fight, guys. It's not me against Chanel. It's, it's not any of that, guys. That's not what it's about. It's the truth and the light against the darkness and the lie. And the truth always prevails. Division and confusion, they are workings of the flesh and they are fruits of the spirit. That's how you discern. And we constantly have this wrestling. But it's up to us to either submit to God, resist the devil so he can flee. Or stay in that place of darkness. It's a choice, though. You can choose this day whom you will serve. You can be on the right side. I'm not telling you to follow me or my word. I'm just telling you the Lord is coming. And right now you're not on the right side. You've made changes, but you haven't done it truthfully, wholeheartedly. You haven't fully surrendered. You don't really believe. And you don't understand what you're fighting or really believing in or believing for and what God desires. You know, the thing about really seeing is you understand the weight of what it is that you're seeing and that the word that God is giving, souls are at stake. Eternity for those souls are at stake. And that means sometimes you have to give of yourself. You have to be made a mockery of. 
Listen, they denied Jesus. They crucified him. They called him every name, but he still died for us. He still did. Okay. Well, Chanel, I never gave you a time. I know that word will never come to pass because there's so many words that the Lord has spoken to me that must come to pass. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, you know, I know that. The enemy couldn't take me out. And that word can't either because it didn't come from God. I pray that you do repent. I pray you do. And I love you with the love of God. And I understand that you're deceived. I understand. I understand. I understand, Chanel. I do. And I know what it's like to be deceived. Chanel, I will be living until every part of God's will for my life is fulfilled. And that is so. And I pray that the will of God be fulfilled in yours. And I pray you receive it. That's what I pray for you. I just gave the word, Chanel. What you do with it is up to you. And there wasn't a time. What you do with it is up to you. And you did the parts of the word. So it doesn't make any sense. But you understood why you did them. But we got to love God more than we love pride. And we got to understand the gravity of our words. I understand that if I say something that's not in accordance to the Lord, it is my life, not yours. So if I lie, Chanel, that death is mine, not yours. But I bless God for every warning. And if I'm out of the will of God, I bless God if he would send me warning. If my life is at stake, I bless God, not this existence, but eternal life. I bless him for every warning he will send. And I pray that I will heed 